Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's webinar. I'm Claire Vandenbroek, and I'm one of the admissions advisors here at Escape Studios. Now, tonight, Taryn Spear presents Invisible Visual Effects, demonstrating how VFX artists create the illusion of reality. Now, Taryn actually studied here. He took our advanced compositing for VFX course back in January 2012. He then spent some time as a studio assistant working here while he was completing his showreel. And he's now working as a digital compositor at Electric Theatre Collective in Soho. So I'm going to hand it straight over to Taryn now. I will be back at the end just to tell you a little bit more about what's happening here at Escape and the courses that we have starting in the new year. Hi guys, um, my name is Taryn Spear. Uh, as Claire has said, I'm a digital compositor. I'm currently working for a company called Electric Theatre Collective. Um, and I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about myself and visual effects um, and how I got into visual effects and uh, via Escape Studios, uh, which is where I studied. Um, so first of all, I'll discuss a little bit about myself. Um, I studied the compositing professional course here, which is an advanced uh, course, 18 weeks. Um, which goes into compositing and visual effects um, more generally. And we kind of go through all of the key skills um, and techniques that are used in the industry uh, as it stands. I'm not going to go into too, many, too much depth as to those uh, techniques in this talk. I'm just going to go, go generally through um, the reasons why I chose to make that decision and, uh, and obviously the route that I then took into that. So as you can see, I'm currently working at a, a company called Electric Theatre Collective. Um, and I was previously, a couple of years ago, working in a, uh, a, a contracting company as a compliance uh, and customer service manager uh, where I kind of lacked a certain degree of creative, uh, creativity in my role and didn't really get the satisfaction that I wanted out of the, uh, uh, the work that I was doing and uh, I kind of wanted to explore other routes. Uh, so this uh, talk obviously focuses on someone who may potentially be looking for a career change or something a little bit new uh, you know, and outside of what they've been doing for maybe some time. So for me, I basically uh, came across the, the idea initially because I was looking for other opportunities, as I say, um, and uh, I decided to look into web design and uh, I got the Adobe package uh, and started studying uh, web design and all the kind of, uh, you know, software that goes along with that, Adobe Flash, Dreamweaver, um, and, uh, you know, all those kind of pieces of uh, software. Coupled with uh, all of this Adobe software was After Effects, which um, is specialized more towards uh, motion graphics, but is in fact a, uh, it's a compositing tool, it's a compositing software. And you, uh, you can do many different things within this software other than just uh, you know, um, motion graphics. So I got very interested in that and I actually looked at the time um, for somewhere to study further uh, and to see if I could enhance my, my knowledge and training of that bit of software um, with a view to potentially going into the film industry and or commercials. Uh, I quickly found out, however, that After Effects wasn't really the industry standard um, in, uh, in, the, in the film industry particularly. Uh, however, a bit of software called Nuke uh, by the Foundry uh, was the industry standard. Um, I then looked for places to study Nuke uh, and found quickly that uh, what seemed to me to be the only place that like trained people very specifically in compositing, um, specifically in Nuke, was Escape Studios. All other courses that I found uh, seemed to kind of specialize much more, sorry, not to specialize, but to cover everything much more generally uh, and to cover everything from editing to filming to visual effects and to compositing. And I'll explain in a minute a little bit more in depth as to what the differences are between visual effects and uh, compositing in terms of being a visual effects artist or a compositor. Um, so anyway, I basically made the leap and I chose to, uh, to leave my job at the time and, and study at Escape Studios. As I said, it was a very intensive 18-week course, um, which covers all of the fundamentals uh, for compositing uh, in that, uh, that course, of course. And I then um, finished the 18 weeks with a, a, you know, a very grounded knowledge of, of everything I'd need to start a career in the industry. Uh, I was very fortunate, actually, to, to be offered a position at Escape Studios as the, stu uh, the studio assistant um, pretty much straight after finishing, uh, which gave me more time as well to spend uh, with the other students who were studying at the time. Um, and, uh, and obviously to perfect my skills even further as well. Um, since then, I, w I worked for six months at Escape Studios after that, and then I was offered a position at, uh, or I started freelancing, in fact, at Electric Theatre Collective, um, and uh, was actually offered a position 
uh, a little while back. Uh, so I've been working there now as a, as a full-time employee. So Electric Theatre Collective um, are a, uh, a pretty new company. They uh, only formed in January 2000, uh, sorry, in the last two years ago. And um, they were formed by uh, three or four members, rather, one of whom is actually a, it's an escapee. And he studied escape studios as well. And uh, they uh, have formed a, a very successful company. In the last two years, they've quadrupled in size. Um, in fact, you can see a bit of information here about them. Uh, formed in 2000, founded in 2012, quadruple over two years, and we've recently uh, done a, quite a few projects um, such as EE, Nike, and PlayStation 4. You may have seen the recent PlayStation 4 launch commercial, uh, which is down here. Um, if you're interested in having a look, actually, I'll share our, uh, we have a, our link, which I'll put in the chat box that you can have a look at. Um, I'll just put that in there so you can all have a look as and when you want to. Um, that's our, our page which goes to the, um, the work and our portfolio information so you can see all of our trailers of our uh, um, work and our recent projects that have been put together. Um, and yeah, there's some pretty exciting stuff that's been going on actually and, and you know, the future is, is looking uh, very bright for electric theatre and, and you know, there's a group of fantastically talented people uh, who are working, uh, working there and it's, it's a joy to, to learn uh, stuff off of uh, all of them. So the title of this, uh, this talk is in fact uh, um, Invisible Visual Effects, uh, as it says back at the beginning. And what, what is that? So I mean, the idea of visual effects obviously is that it's not invisible, because obviously it's going to be in a movie. So you may think, what, what, I'm, what am I talking about? But the whole point, and you would know this straight away in visual effects, is to make sure you've got a, um, a really polished and a believable uh, bit of effects on your screen. And you know, to make sure you don't question it, essentially, is the idea. Uh, you know, we've all seen um, you know B movies or uh, some you know bad TV shows which have got pretty cheap special effects and visual effects, and it becomes pretty obvious straight away that uh, it's 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 done you know pretty quickly and not to a very high standard. And you can see immediately on the screen what is uh, not real, you know, what is a visual effect and what is not. So the um, the idea behind invisible visual effects is that you're actually making visual effects to such a high standard that it is not noticeable and you can't understand, you know, you can't see rather straight away that it is, uh, it is not real and that's the art uh, behind it all that, um, that we would want to, you know, achieve. Um, you can see here is a couple of slides of some movies which uh, I believe have achieved, uh, you know, invisible visual effects in terms of the fact that you watch the movie and you don't have any question as to whether or not it is a, a real uh, thing or, you know, it doesn't take your attention away from the movie. That's, that's the whole idea of a movie is to watch it through and just enjoy it for what it is and not to go, hey, that's completely fake, you know, those guys are clearly not floating through the air. Uh, I know that's impossible, but the idea is that it's going to be made believable by the uh, visual effects teams. So uh, the few examples here we can see, um, this is from uh, Batman, and you can see the, uh, the guy obviously doesn't have a face like this, and uh, he, uh, he is actually a normal human being. However, this is not makeup, as you can see. I mean, there's actually a hole through his cheek. So you can see that he's not, uh, he's not been made up to look like this. It is a visual effect. It's been done by uh, CG. And I'll take this opportunity to just quickly explain the difference between a visual effects artist and a, a compositor. Uh, the visual effects artist would be the person who actually creates this um, that you can see in front of you, so that this uh, this kind of face, you know, which is obviously not real, this has been created uh, in visual effects in a, in, a, in a bit of software, most likely uh, Maya, which is, is the industry standard uh, these days for, for 3D. And someone, a visual, visual effects artist, will create that, um, but then they'll hand all of the elements that they've created and, and rendered out of the software, they'll hand them over to the compositor, and it's then up to the compositor um, to then implement them into the, the original uh, plate or the, the original bit of footage, um, and then really blend them in and make sure that they match uh, so as you, know, you, you don't question it, and it, it looks like it actually belongs in the shot. So this is why I really um, chose uh, compositing myself, because it's the point where you really see the final product come to come to light, and you know, it's just, it, for me, it's the most satisfying stage where you get given all the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, and you get to put them together, really match them up, and 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 see the actual final shot that everyone else is going to see when they watch the film or commercial or whatever it is you're working on. And you know, for me, that's that's really satisfying because, you know, it it would be it's fantastic, obviously, to create the stuff in the first place, but to be handing it off to someone else uh, to then work on further, uh, to then create the final thing. Um, that for me is, is, the, is the, the bit that really gives me satisfaction. 